On the street, there is nothing suspicious about Mr. Patel other than his brown skin. Well, again, I don't know if I agree with that. I don't think it had anything to do with him being Indian. I think it had to do with uh, an abuse of power. I think they would have done it to someone of any skin tone. This is just one of those things that doesn't need to happen, said Sherrod. Noting that Mr. Patel denies pulling away from the cops during the pat-down. I hope there's a video. That officer doesn't need to be on the streets, Sherrod added. Craig Patel told reporters that he came to the U.S. to make his ambitions a reality, but he has since begun to question whether he has chosen the right path. It is the American dream for me because I came from a very poor family, and I worked so hard here, said Patel, adding, I'm totally devastated that I might have made a big mistake. The family intends to sue. I would hope so. The officer that caused the injury has been suspended. I would also hope so again. The sad incident, they said, serves once again to highlight how police, when faced with someone who cannot effectively communicate, default to the use of excessive force rather than attempting to rationally diffuse the situation. Am I saying that all police officers are exactly like that? No, I'm not. But I'm saying that this is a growing issue here. Um, we, the police officers in this country, kill more people than they kill in any other country. And you can argue that uh, we are an armed nation, therefore it makes us more deadly from the eyes of the police. But you got to remember that civilian violence against police have gone down considerably for the last uh, 10 years. You can look that up. It's fact. There's something else going on here. It's... um. It's something rather frightening that we're finding more and more incidences of bad police. And again, I'm not saying that uh, they are the majority. This is from uh, Steve Watson. A mentally ill man weighs broom. Cops shoot him dead and cuff him. A mother in Miami Gardens called police asking them to help her calm her mentally disabled son. But when the cops showed up, the man, 25, waved a broom at him. So they shot him multiple times and it killed him. Now, this is kind of odd because I've actually been in this situation before. I have a friend who I will let remain nameless, but I have no reason to lie to you. He got uh, terrible hallucinations and began to think that he was various superheroes and actors and just in an inconsolable rage. So we called the police, and thankfully uh, they were not perfect, but they were good. At some point when they were taking him away, he asked one cop to move away from him because in his imagination, this one cop was going to offend or hurt him. Rather than do that, the offending cop threw him to the ground, which I don't think was needed. Um, there were like eight cops around him, so that one cop could have stepped back, not because he was trying to uh, stand down in the face of danger, but because the person that I'm talking about it was very, very sick, and he was clearly not looking to question your authority. He was uh, delusional. But at least they did, in my opinion, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, a solid uh, 7 in terms of what I expected them to do when I asked for help. Well, this here was an absolute nightmare. This would be a 0. The mother, Catherine Daniels Brown, told reporters that she called the police at 5 a.m. Sunday saying that my son has got a mental problem. Please send somebody to help him. According to reports, when the police arrived at the scene, Laval Hall, who was a schizophrenic, refused to comply with police orders and ran off. The cops followed, attempting to use tasers to stop Hall. The police statement notes that Hall was holding an object that he used against them as a weapon. While the statement did not give any detail on what the object was, witnesses say that it was a broom. You tell them that your child is mentally challenged, and then all of a sudden you run out to him. You know he doesn't have a gun. He had a broom, a red broom with straws. Old red broom, said the man's mother. If I knew that they were going to kill my child, I would never ever have called them, she added. He has a mental problem, and when I went around the corner to help my child, all the police had to do was take my child because he's got a mental problem. They killed my child. They took my child away from me. Again, a broom? I mean, 
a couple officers can't take on a mentally challenged man in any other way. They couldn't have shot him in the leg for crying out loud. I know you're trained to aim for the highest mass here. The man is armed with a broom and he is mentally ill. You couldn't have just shot him in the leg. It says witness statements indicate that Hall was shot five times and that after he was dead, the cops placed his lifeless body in handcuffs. They, they handcuffed the corpse. The police statement, however, differs. Miami Gardens Police Chief Stephen Johnson told the press conference as a link Tuesday that Hall was still alive and struggling when the officers handcuffed him and placed him face down on the street. He continued to be combative, combative said Johnson, adding that the officers did the best they could. When Hall's mother attempted to intervene, police turned their guns on her. Yeah, clearly a threat. I, she had she had a broom, she might be dead. He drew his gun and told us to get back or he'll shoot us. My hands went up, she said. As the local news reports details, police have said previous runs in with Hall and knew that he was already mentally ill. So they knew going into it. They knew. When they left, they went home to their family, Hall's cousin Walter Pinkins said of the police responsible for the shooting. They are probably home eating, drinking, and having a good time, but we are back here grieving, and that's not fair. The officer who shot Hall is said to be on paid leave pending an investigation. And uh, there's other links for other mentally ill people that have been harmed this way. I, all I got to say is this. I don't necessarily look at the man as a jackal sitting there eating happy that he killed somebody today. I, I, I don't automatically assume the man is a monster. I don't think he should be a police officer. I think he should have to face charges. But I, I, I draw the line at necessarily calling him a monster beyond what he was, the monster that he was created to be in the way that we're training all common sense out of law enforcement today and uh that's becoming rather bothersome friends and then brings us to the last story the dum de dum de dum de of the day uh, this is a uh, man released after months in jail for possessions of <laughs> vitamins this is Mikhail Thalen, InfoWars. Nobody finds me dum de dum de dum de's like Mikhail Thalen. God bless uh Mikhail. A Minnesota man was released from jail this week after spending close to three months in custody for possession of vitamins. I am like a vitamin freak. Look up, uh, we always do the uh, Saturday edition on the Media Speaks, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Saturday. We do the, um, <coughs> excuse me, Saturday edition. And we all just sort of chill in our houses and talk about the news that uh, we've covered since you know we've, we did our last posting. We have a weekend edition. I have a, a mound of vitamins that I take every single day. I make Christelle take them. They do nothing but make her healthy, and I don't know why she doesn't take them when I tell her to, but she's doing better than she did. My point being, vitamins are the only thing that saves us from, uh, to some degree anyway, from how toxic our food has become. And now everything is looked at as some controlled substance when really they shouldn't be controlling substances at all, but leaving up to each person what they put into their body. It says the man, 31-year-old Joseph Burrell, was arrested last November after police claimed that a vitamin powder found in his vehicle was actually illegal amphetamines. Charged with two counts of felony drug possession, Burrell was incarcerated on $250,000 bail while the substance awaited final testing at the state crime lab. I told the judge I couldn't plead guilty to something that I knew wasn't a drug, Burrell told Moncato Free Press. They set my bail at $250,000 for vitamins. After spending weeks behind bars, Burrell was quietly released, I bet, only days before his trial. Man released after months in jail for possession of vitamins, read the headline. I have been sitting in the jail since November, so he missed Christmas, he missed New Year's. With my bail set at $250,000, Burrell said. Then, two days before the trial, they dropped the charges and let me go. 
Lab analysis corroborated Burrell's claims after the powder did in fact turn out to be mere vitamins and not speed as the officers claimed. You can trust law enforcement. Even more concerning, Burrell stated that police waited more than a month to send the evidence to the crime lab after his arrest. Similarly, the crime lab also waited a month after testing the substance to return it back to prosecutors. So they knew all along the man was innocent. They just dilly-dallied about getting it back, hoping he'd plead on and get money out of him. As deplorable as Burrell's situation is, many have not been so favorably. The multi-year investigation into the Federal Bureau of Investigation's crime lab by the Department of Justice uncovered rampant tampering of evidence. Um, Friedrich Whitehurst, it says here, a former supervisory special agent of the FBI, and we did a whole report on them a couple shows ago, for more than a decade joined the Alex Jones Show, it says, in 2010 to discuss the FBI's long history of fabricating and altering evidence. Whitehurst blew the whistle in the 1990s and forged the agency, forced the agency to adapt new guidelines in order to ensure greater oversight. Friends, that is your massive police state update, um, also your ISIS update. Thank you for listening, friends. Please donate to the show if you can. You can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Also, look up. Passing Time Band on Facebook.com. We have started a Kickstarter program to uh, help our band achieve some of the things that we are really longing for. We have some marketing things that have fallen, thankfully, from heaven to us, and we're looking to make them happen. So you could really, really help me out by checking out Passing Time Band and looking at our Kickstarter project. Uh, good night, friends. God bless. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself because we are posting all the time news information that you want to hear.